Hi, my name is Mike Zola from the BRS Integration Lab. Here we're going to actually go into a quick overview of the Avamar backup and recovery options. For backups, I'm actually going to start in the policy screen. In this policy screen, I'm actually going to leverage something that we've done in another subject matter, which is the data sets, the, the retentions, and the schedules that we've already created. So inside a policy, I can actually go ahead at the top here, and let's go ahead and create a new policy. So I'm simply going to right click and say new group. I'm going to call this uh, demo policy, and I'm going to enable it. I have the ability to choose encryption method of all data in flight, either none, 128 AES encryption, or 256-bit AES encryption. I'm going to choose next and I'm going to choose the data set that I've, pro I've already created previously. In this case I'll choose the default data set. I'll click next. I'll choose the schedule that I've already created previously that matches the schedule in which I want this to actually run through. Choose the retention policy that I want to use and then I'm going to choose all the clients that I want applied to this policy. So now you can see that my demo policy has five clients in it. And I can right click this and say backup group. That will kick off a backup for all jobs inside, that, inside of that policy. I also have the capability by clicking up the backup and restore the capability to select backup and then to choose what I want to actually back up on the system and run it ad hoc or on demand. Looking at the activity monitor allows me the capability to go ahead and look at the status of all jobs inside the system. So while they're running or while they're not running I'll be able to go through here and monitor their process or progress. To look at the recovery options, I'm simply going to be logged into the administrator and I'm going to click on Backup and Restore. This is going to give me the capabilities to look at all of my clients and the different recovery options. First, let's take a simple Windows client. A Windows client, first we'll note here by clicking the Restore tab, we'll see in the yellow here is every day that I actually have a backup that I can recover from. By clicking on the backup set here, I will then be able to browse the backup and choose what I want to actually recover. Some of the advanced options under the restore for a Windows file system is one, I have the ability to go into its original location or a different host, which I would then be able to browse through and figure out which host I wanted this to go back to and browse into the directory and figure out where on that host I want it to go to. I also have the ability to choose the encryption method in which I want to send it back across the network which is 128-bit encryption, 256-bit AES encryption, or none at all. And then I have some more options here that allow me some awesome uh, type options. I have the capability here if I click if modified to only send back the data to the client if it's been modified since the backup I'm selecting. In most cases when I do a backup or recovery for, to a host and I say recover a directory, most backup application will simply wipe the directory and then overwrite it or re recover or copy over the data that's needed to be restored. Avmar has the ability with this if modified flag to be able to go ahead and only send back the files that have been modified since the previous backup. I also have some options that I can choose for open files. Moving on to get say to one of our more complex recovery options, I can go into Exchange. Inside of Exchange I can choose a backup day and I have two options here. 
I have the ability to choose to recover the information store itself, first or second storage group as we can see here, and choose to recover. And then my recovery options, again, would be to this location to another location. And also I have the ability to choose if I want to perform database recovery after bringing back the database, keep the logs after restore. So maybe I want to actually copy the logs to another location, which would put them into this temp location. Wait for the database recovery to complete before I say that my restore has been successful and mount the databases or choose to uncheck this if I want to leave them unmounted for my DBA to go in and modify the database. Okay, and advanced options here. Again, if I need to go to a different server, I can put in the server name, the storage group that I want to recover this storage group into. Now, I also have the ability with Avamar out of the box here to also do mailbox backup and recovery. So here I can see that I've clicked on a different backup that ran the same night, where I can now drill down into a user, into their inbox, and actually recover, sing recover a single message. This gives me the capability on recovery to simply restore back that exchange user account. Okay, and here note since I'm recovering a message, it's going to go right back into the Exchange database since I'm going back in place. If I chose to go to a different location, I would be able to browse and actually choose the actual Exchange mailbox I wanted to recover into. Okay, some of the other backup options inside of Avamar is this ability for legal holds, right? What happens if tomorrow I get called and so-and-so we're getting sued and I actually need to keep a backup, last night's backup for longer term. I can simply come into backup management, choose that same exchange server that we were just dealing with, and choose last night's backup. Note you can see the expiration is set to expire on 1228. I can actually click here, right click, and say change retention. Maybe I don't want it to be daily, I want it to be weekly. I can also go ahead and change expiration date. This is going to allow me for no end date here or till further notice to keep this backup until our litigation suit ends. I simply say OK. It warns me, do I really want to change this? And I say yes. This is now sent a message to everybody who's currently logged into the system. It lets me know that something's happened. Change backup expiration. Somebody's changed it. Well, let's look at the details. It lets me know very quickly that the expiration date has now been set to no end date. The client that was in question or had this happen to was Exchange, exchange 2007, Avmar 049. The create time or the backup date was 12-14. And if I double click here, I can see that MZOLA did it through the GUI interface, through the administrator role. Now, if I'm not logged into the system, I also have the ability to go ahead here and click on the administration console, look at the audit log, and choose or sort by time. And if I come down here to the bottom, I can see that MZOLA edited a backup process. Let's double click this event and now I'm going to get almost the same screen I had previous that says, hey, so he changed the expiration to no end date. The client was Avmaro 49 and double clicking I can still see that it was the inside the GUI interface as an administrator and the username was MZOLA. So very quickly I have that audit trail so that even though people can start changing uh, retention policies, I have a full track of what's actually happening inside the system. That concludes our quick overview of Avamar's backup and recovery options. Thank you very much and have a great day.